Hello and welcome to 365 Days of World Building, Divine Intervention. Today is day five. Um, and so today, as I was saying yesterday, we were going to talk about uh, 3500 before pact, which is when all the nations start to consolidate together. Um, and I mean, it still works for what I wanted to do, but it's kind of different than what I wanted to do. Basically, I was putting the timeline together and I was piecing down all these different events and you have the Great Migration War that you can see on the screen right now. Um, and the Great Migration War was when uh, Queen Flasgar unite, united all the tribes of Tsars um, for expansion. And basically she was able to get them all on like a single motive and then she just sent patrols out in all directions just to like gain territory for Tsars. Uh, and during this Great Migration of the tribes, they got deep into the Everfolk territory and they were just slaughtering um, <clears throat> villages and settlements and some of them got out and some of them came to extinction. Um, and eventually in 3253, the Council of Dyer was able to come together um, and united all of the Everfolk. As the invasions were happening, they were falling back onto each other and they were starting to like become friends and whatnot but before that there was a lot of in war like all the nations had at the time or well they weren't nations yet but they were all fighting each other for supplies or some you know some of them would have like friends and whatever so the war finally the turning point of the war came in 3191 and it's called the day of the dre and the day of the dre is basically a point when the settlement of Dre decided not to run and not just stood their ground, but started to go on attack. And it was the, the turning point that really was able to like raise the morale of ever folk and get like the other settlements to go on the attack. And they pushed the tribes out of the dire forest. Um, and so the reason I got distracted is because, as you can see in the background, I thought it'd be cool to draw a picture for the Dre, and then now four hours later, I didn't finish the timeline, but we got to get this thing posted. So, let's talk about the Dre, because the Dre are awesome. The Dre are, um, so in the Everfolk, as we've kind of started to go over a little bit, they each have an affinity with a dire animal. All the different settlements of Everfolk that come under the Everfolk umbrella later on all like worship life and they all have this affinity with a certain dire animal and that they coexist with and they worship and they take care and they're almost they're seen as like demigods or gods depending on what settlement it is and the dre have dire squirrels and the dire squirrels are awesome they're huge huge squirrels you can ride them um they got, some of them got tusks you put spikes on them anyways the Dre are an awesome, awesome settlement in the Everfolk. They're one of the more militia, military kind of sects. And there's three different groups um, that I'm kind of drawing at the moment. And the first one are the Gray Squirrels. Gray Squirrels, your main infantry, uh, a lot of melee, clubs, maces, things like that, swords, cavalry. You come flying in on a squirrel. Um, not flying squirrels. Flying squirrels is actually a different settlement in the Everfolk. They're close by, same like Valley, but different. It's They got different stuff going on. Anyways, so here we got dire squirrels. Um, as you can kind of notice, uh, the Everfolk, they only wear wooden armor, but they're from a core of trees that are like tens of thousands years old, so they're highly compressed, and they're basically as strong as metal. Um, but dire, dire squirrels. So I got excited and I was drawing this picture. So now we're talking about them. So you have the gray squirrels are their main militia. Um, the front of, you know, the point of the battle. Um, they go and they charge out front. Uh, and then behind them, you have the red squirrel line, which is more of like the archery range squadron. And they stay out back and they stay high up in the trees. 
and they camouflage their squirrels and the red hides in with the bark and they're able to come and go and just pick people off from far away um and then you also have the elite squad uh who have the black squirrels and they're basically like these crazy assassin squirrel riding killers that are just awesome they just pick people off um the squirrels are like wicked vicious there's a lot of more it's common to see like maybe spikes or armor planing on the gray squirrels um and on the red squirrels you don't tend to see a lot of armor plating it'll be just mostly leather um because like i said they're trying to move around and get a good shot off the black squirrel elite squad they are just like full head to toe spikes vicious plating um the one that i'm drawing in here it actually has like three spiked balls tied to the tail and it's just like the scroll is just as deadly as the assassin that's riding it um <clears throat> so the day of the dre basically is the day where the settlement of dre couldn't put up with the fact that the tribes had come into the the dire force anymore and instead of running because all at that point a lot of the tribes were retreating back into other settlements and they were just losing footing and they just decided no more and they held off their settlement and then at the end of the day decided that that wasn't enough and then just full-on charged and once it started to go through the trees uh, and go down the lines that the Dre had just taken the attack to them. Uh, it really boosted the morale of the rest of the Everfolk. And that was kind of like, that's the turning point in the Great Migration War. Uh, so we didn't really get to talk about all of the nations, because I kind of wanted to do that today so we could start moving down to where the pact is this week. Um, but we did talk about the tribe of the valley kind of coming together on one god and we talked about the everfolk coming together um it's the the everfolk's kind of hard because they don't have one god uh we'll get into it more in the pack later on this week but that's how those two basically started to come in together as like large communities that would form the nations later on uh tomorrow we'll go over the war of magic and we'll go over the great party which is the wanderers kind of get together um and we'll also talk about the protectors of the blade and how they came together and we'll, we'll wrap up this kind of like segment of how the nations kind of decided like i said yesterday like oh hey if we're nations like we can attack the other nations and that's better for us uh and then starting on monday what we'll do is uh We'll start talking about the pact. Uh, I, the pact's probably going to be all next week. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the guy who came up with the idea for the pact, uh, the rebellion that he had to start so he could get the pact going on, um, and then we're going to have to talk about the treaties between the nations to just get the idea of the pact going. And then there's a great my group like there's a great like. 300 years of where all the wanderers have to get all these emissaries from all the different nations and travel them back. Um, and then all the different nations kind of build their own capitals. Uh, there's a lot to it. It's kind of interesting. Or it's Hopefully it's more than kind of interesting, but that's what we'll be talking about later. All right. Thank you for joining us on 365 Days of World Building.